2024 is here. And if I could only give you guys one piece of information that could help you out for the rest of the year, this is what it would be. Stop trying to do this alone. Again, stop trying to do this alone. (laughs) Guys, you need mentors, coaches. You need those people in your lives. Okay? You, You do. You need those people in your lives. Right? And not only do you need them in your lives, you need them within the barbering industry. In all of my in in all of my years that I have been around the industry, the standards of a barbershop worthy haircut has never grown faster than they are now. The skills behind the, the skills in the barbering industry are growing at a rapid rate like tech. Right? Every time you turn around, there's a new clipper, a new technique, a new style, there's a new, there's something new. Okay. Now, for some of you, you say, well, how different can a haircut be? Well, I want you to think about something. I want you to take a look at a haircut from, let's say, 1995. And I want you to look at the standards of haircuts for rappers, uh, for singers, for athletes. Look at their standard of haircut. And this is what I mean. This is what I mean by that. Their standard of haircut, right? Generally sets the pace for what clients are requesting in barbershops. They're requesting these things, they're they're requesting these styles in, in, in barbershops. Now, when I was a kid, hey, a kid's haircut for me was an even Steven, probably a one or maybe a clipper open, and more than likely, it was going to be against the grain. Zip, 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 line it up, done, get it out the, get out the chair. I'm telling you right now, until I was... Until I joined the military, I didn't know what other haircut to ask for from a barbershop. And I learned what type of haircut to ask for in the barbershop, actually, from my friends when I was in middle school. And the only thing they got was an even Steven with a lineup. So everybody in the school, unless you had long hair like braids or anything like that, But if you was getting a haircut, I don't care if you grew your hair out and and everything like that. And you had a little teeny weeny afro or something like that. When you went to the barbershop, you got even Steven with a lineup. Now, kids now don't get the same type of styles of hair. They don't get that. They they don't get those anymore. Do you understand? They do not get those. And if a kid is getting that, he is very unhappy to get that haircut. I'm just just sharing with you. He's very he's very unhappy to get that haircut. So, anyways, and and as as I digress back to back to my point, with the industry changing as rapidly as it's changing, the standards are changing now. Like. Things that when I was uh, uh, things that back in the day were de- deemed as 
salon type things, um, you know, heavy scissor work and all the things that were deemed de- deemed cosmetologist type stuff are now coming into the barbershop. Now clients are coming in and getting a haircut and expecting for their hair to be styled. We'll just send them out there soaking wet like like uh like a dog that just came in from the rain. You know, you cut the top and you cut it, but then you know what? I'm gonna just leave it soaking wet. No, they want what they see and you need to be able to, you want to go up in price. You need to be able to provide these things, right? My mentor said every haircut needs to be completed with a professional blow dry. Mm. I'm telling you when I... (laughs) I'm telling you, when I first started, like, we had blow dryers in the shop, but the blow dryers was to blow off the ha- the loose hair that had got on the client. It had nothing to do with styling the hair. Nothing to do with styling the hair. But as I watched the industry grow, and I watched the industry grow rapidly, I started to see, I said, oh, wait a minute. I got to figure out what's going on. And and where did I get my first mentor? When I first started in the shop, I couldn't afford to miss time to go. I take that back. I probably should have, but I did not. uh, I didn't see it as advantageous for me to miss out on time in the shop to go and take classes. Now, I'll run and take a class in a minute. But at the time, I didn't see it. So what was my trade-off? If I couldn't go to the classes, then I brought the classes to me. How did I bring the classes to me? YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And when I wasn't getting what I needed from YouTube, I felt, I purchased classes. I purchased, you know, classes that people have online. I started purchasing those. Right. And when I was and and, and then when I wasn't getting what I when I wasn't getting what I wanted from those classes. I then started going and taking classes. Now, this was a long process, but I always had a mentor, whether it was a. Um. An internet mentor, and that's what that's what I call you know these YouTube channels. Whether it was internet mentor, uh, 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 a course mentor, or I had a physical person that I could go and talk to, and even with all of that, my initial mentors were the other barbers in the shop, And actually, before I even went to YouTube and Instagram and things of that nature, before I really started going heavy into those those places, my initial mentor, well, my, one of my early mentors, I was already actually, honestly, when I got into, when actually, when I was in the military, I was watching YouTube videos. I was watching Al's Millions and I was watching... Uh, I think, I believe it was Vic Damone and there's another guy out of Atlanta and the guy that owns, I think it's called Easy Blade now. They, they all had YouTube videos way back. I'm talking like early, uh, shoot. I think I was watching those videos in 2008, maybe. 2000, 2008, 2009, I was watching those videos then. Um, so I, YouTube has always been, you know, a part of it. But um, when I got around the other barbers and I was in a shop, 
they became my mentors. I asked them, you know, things that they were good at that I, that I was not good at. I said, okay, how do you do that? I watched. They de- they demonstrated. They showed me. Sometimes they didn't feel the, t- the need to teach, but they would take the chair, turn the chair so I could see it because they knew that I was actually paying attention to what was going on. They were my first mentors that I could actually reach, touch, and ask questions to. Now, of course, you can ask questions in YouTube. They might get an answer. They might not get an answer. Instagram might get an answer, might not get an answer. But they were the people that I could say, hey, what is going on here? And they say, oh, yeah, it's this. Boom, 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 boom. You know, and they and they just break it down for me. And so they were they were very, very important um mentors. I listen, the guys in my shop, I still go to them for stuff because there's still stuff that I don't understand. So the mentor is very, very, very important. It's very important. They're going and and and, and here's what I'm gonna tell you from from that from this. You need to understand that the mentor, if you use them correctly, if you work with them the right way, they're going to save you some bumps and bruises. Are they going to save all of them for you? No, because this industry is a trade industry where you're working with your hands. So some of this stuff you are going to have to learn. But if you listen to what they're saying, if you implement what, if if you ask them that, Can I say this real quick? If you ask somebody for information or you ask them a question, can we do this? Can we really actually listen to the information that they're giving you and apply it? And stop spending all the time saying, oh, I was going to do this. Oh, I was going to do that. Oh, no. No, no. If you understood it, you wouldn't have asked me the question. You're asking for clarity. I'm giving you this, and and, and this is this is how I work. I'm giving you this and showing you this from a thought process of where it starts from me. And I build on fundam- fundamental foundations. Brick by brick by brick by brick. By brick. I don't just jump right into something. You understand what I'm saying? It's not new. No, 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 no. We're building brick by brick with this foundation. So I'm going to explain it to you in phases. Hey, we do this first. Why do we? And I'm going to explain to you this is phase number one. This is why we do this. This is what's going on. And if you're you're a mentee of mine, especially within the shop, I'm watching what you're doing. You understand? I'm watching, even though even if you aren't asking me questions, I'm watching. I'm seeing. I understand where you get stuck. I see what's going on. What's the difficulty? What's ha- I see all of that stuff. And your mentor should too. If they like, you know, especially your in shop mentor should see all of those things. If they're senior to you, they're observing. I don't care what any barber says, they're observing and watching. They are observing and watching. Every barber in the shop watches other barbers. Are we clear? Every barber in the shop watches other barbers. It is just that it, there's nothing complicated about it. It's just that simple. So if you're asking a barber for information, if, if, if they've agreed to be your mentor, they're especially watching you. So if they give you information, please don't come back to your mentor and say, yeah, 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 but... I was going to just do this. This might sound mean, might sound rude, but you asked me for help. I didn't ask you. 
And I'm not saying that from a place of cockiness. I'm saying you came to me and asked me for information. I am giving you said information that you requested. So why are we playing why are we why are we playing games? Why why are we jumping? Listen, learning something new does create a level of fear. That's that's fine, that's understandable. I get it. But if you're already struggling, what's adding a little more struggle struggle with foundation gonna do? Understand? If you're already struggling. I'm already having an issue with this. I can't understand what I'm doing and what I'm doing is not working. I understand that. Therefore, I brought the question to you. If you feel that the person that you brought the question to understands what is going on and understands how to make these things work, if you feel that, please listen to them. Your mentors, your mentors are, are, are guides to a place that you want to go. They are a guide to the places that you want to go. So let them guide you. Ask questions. Observe. Watch. See what's going on. This is this is it. This is this is it. See what is happening. Pay attention to what is happening. Right? Guys, this this mentor this mentor relationship is important. If you And I'm and I'm going to say this. You know why we have so many coaches and courses and things like that. Now courses are about this is just my opinion. Courses are about production, right? High yield. I'm giving everybody access. I can't be everything to everybody. So I'm just going to give people, I'm going to put it all in one place so people can access the information. That's what courses are for. Okay. But it's also because a lot of people who are now coaches and educators and things of that nature, and they may never tell you this, But someone told them, stop giving the information away for free. If they value the information, they will pay for it. And why did they tell them that? Because the same people who are now charging gave the information away for free. And what they realized is, is that people didn't value the information. They still wanted to be a mentor. They still wanted to be a coach. They still wanted to be an educator. But they felt as if the information was not valued when they gave it away for free because people asked questions and still went back and did their own thing. So they said, if you're going to ask me questions, if you're going to take my time and I'm going to give you this, you're going to pay for it. Period. And the reason that people are paying for it is because tire kickers that came in and asked them questions and here's my favorite. Uh, can I pick your brain over? Uh, you know, I want to set up a time to pick your brain. Hmm. You want to pick my brain and tell me and I tell you what to do and you and, and you stand on your 
your ideals, logic, or belief. Oh, okay, sure. I guess so. You hear me? I guess so. But what do I know? I'm 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 just telling you, I'm just telling you from experience. Like you guys has got these mentors and these and and these coaches and people working with you in the shop and they're giving you they they taking time out of their schedule to give you free game and then once they give you the game they leave. Once they give once you once they give you the game, sorry, not that not that they leave. They give you the game and then you go back to doing the same thing. That's frustrating. Because they're giving you the game because they want to help you. They're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to help you. And they understand that it's a learning process. It's a learning. So you have to commit to the learning as much as they're trying to commit to the coaching. They committed to the to the coaching, to the educating by giving you the information. Now you have to commit to the process of learning the information. Pay attention to the demonstration. Write it down. Write it down if you need to. Take notes. Pull your phone out and record what they're showing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Just, oh, just pay attention, please. Please, please, please pay attention. Pay attention. If you want your 2024 to be better, to improve, to grow, to increase your 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 bottom line. If you want to do these things, get a mentor. Get a physical mentor that can hold you accountable. YouTube, them courses, they can't hold you accountable, but a person Get a person that you are willing to be held accountable to. And you let them coach you and hold you accountable. You ask them questions. You come up with something every week. Hey, look, I want to learn this. Hey, look, I want to learn that. Hey, look, I want to learn this. Have them hold you accountable. Get, Get some accountability in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I work for myself now. That's great. That's great. You do you think no, no, yeah, you don't. You don't you don't you don't work for yourself. You work for those that clientele that you have. Because if they don't come in, you don't work. You just sitting around hanging out. Period. If you don't, you just sitting around hanging out. Get you a mentor that's going to hold you accountable. You can do all the other things. You can do the YouTube. You can do the Instagram. You can buy the courses and everything like that. But get a person that you, that can hold you accountable with, and preferably within your shop. Person that can hold you accountable. If you're by yourself in in a, in a shop and you're you're really really struggling, you can't figure some stuff out. You got some options. You can go buy some courses. You can go do that. But I would highly suggest. So it's just me. I would highly suggest going and and maybe taking some time, even if it's one day a week, going and seeing if you can find. A shop that you can work in where you can be around other barbers, other barbers who are better than you. Who And, and it may not be skill-wise, but it might be business-wise. You are one-person shop. They got 12 people in the shop. It may just be business-wise. Are we clear? There, there's different things that you can learn. Let's learn. Let's grow this year. Let's let's get some accountability in our in, in our lives and stop fearing learning new things. Yes, it's going to suck. Yes, it's uncomfortable. No, it's not the, the best thing in the world that you want to do. But on the other side of this is growth. So let's grow. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. 
2024 can be your best year. If you let it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Band of Barbers podcast. I'm your host, Devon Evans. Thank you so, so, so much. If you like what you heard today, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, hit that like button, and share, share, share. Share it all. Let everybody know. Play it in your barber shops. Play it on your play this on the on your way to work. And if it has helped you in any way, leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know what's going on. What you guys are thinking. Right? I appreciate you guys. Have a great evening. I'll see you guys tomorrow night.